What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at NVIDIA stock, ticker symbol NVDA, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, May 28th. Alright guys, NVIDIA stock back on Friday, we finished up $26.70 per share, that's plus 2.57% in regular trading hours. We were up another 4 or 5 points after hours. Listen, as always, take it with a grain of salt, the reason being, volume is incredibly, incredibly low typically in the after hours, so we have to take that with a grain of salt, but as I always say, you know, it is the real price. It's not like it's not the real price, so if I'm a bull, I'd rather it's up versus down or flat, but... Always just, you know, remembering that it's on low volume. So look, let's pull out as much directional bias and as much information as we possibly can as we head into this short week now after the long weekend here on NVIDIA. And we're going to take a look at the volume profile, the psychological levels, implied volatility, the expected move for tomorrow, and the directional bias coming out of the chain for tomorrow. So let's get started here on the five-minute chart with that volume profile analysis, trying to pull out some directional bias if it is present. Guys, just so you're aware, NVIDIA is a daily upload. I cover the stock in heading into every single trading day. So I appreciate you subscribing to the channel and I'll keep the NVIDIA videos coming. Let's take a look here now. We're, what we're really doing here is looking under the hood, trying to pull out, hey, you know, it was a green day. Was there bullish bias in the volume profile that supports that green day? Or was there really not? Which is, of course, you know, bears, it's already a green day back on Friday. So you might as well look for at least, at, at a minimum, no bias to support that whatsoever. Whereas bulls, we kind of have one option. We want there to be at least some bullish bias, really as much as possible. So let's take a look under the hood here and see if there was anything interesting. So first of all, the open, very contextual. High volume quickly fades off. That's what we expect. Now here, you can see that on this upside move, right, this one here, we saw increasing volume on the upside move, and then volume starts to fade with one exception candle, continues to fade off into the backside of that move, right, as it starts to kind of fade off a little bit and, and slow down in terms of volume. This here is very slight, okay, on a scale of 0 to 100%, 100% being like the highest bias we could possibly see. I'll label this like a 15% bullish bias, okay? Maybe, maybe going up to 20, but it's not incredibly substantial. So as we move through the day, we start to see a similar thing here. This here is a little bit sloppy, right? We just start to see it increasing contextual, contextual up until this candle, and then it pops. That's out of context now, and it sustains for a couple of bars and then fades off, okay? I would call that like 10%, still small. As we move into the close, the volume size on these bars here, this one here, by the way, up top, that's going to be a rebalancing bar. It's, notice how it's immediately after the close. That's going to be driven by a lot of buying and selling being done by algorithms. Notice how it's very little actual volume. Or I'm sorry, high volume. It's very little actual movement on the candle itself. A lot of both sides hitting by algorithm being triggered by the closing bell. But what we see here is a whole lot of green bars broken up by one red bar. It doesn't always have to be the size, how many shares were traded. We can also see a, simply a high level of consecutive bars on one side or the other, as long as volume isn't like below average on those bars. So here we're seeing a little bit of an early increase compared to what we expect to see. Usually on NVIDIA, especially as of late, volume increases a little bit later than that heading into the close. So we have not only that, but also a high amount of consecutive green bars broken up by just the one red bar. That's bias. I, I, I would say maybe it's not huge, right? But maybe 20% bias there as well. Okay, each one uh, out of a possible 0 to 100 not added up. And listen, you know, that makes sense. Supporting a 25 2.6% upside move, it's not a 12% day, right? So it, it's actually interesting. You know, I say as much as possible in terms of bias. But that might be perceived by some as actually not necessarily true. Because if you have, you know, a 1% green day and there's huge bullish bias, what does that tell you? It tells you that the bulls owned the day and still struggled to make any actual movement, which is at the end of the day, what matters and how we actually make money. So, you know, there's, 
I, I, I guess I would say the most biased possible within context of the actual move is the best way to put it. But let's move on to something I would argue much more simple to follow and highly, highly effective to the point where I think everybody, including beginners, needs to be paying attention to this. The psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels that there's going to be a lot of trading decisions being made around upon tests. Okay, starting with the 30-minute chart, we have the 50 period, that white line, and the 200 period, the gray line. Now, you guys noticed that back on Thursday, we were well above these levels, right? On Friday, we got a test off the open, and we bounced and pulled away from the ascending level the remainder of the day. That's not a bad thing to see if you're a bull. Okay, now continuing into uh, Tuesday, here tomorrow, what I really want to see bulls is I like the way that this 30 minute is looking. You have the 200 period ascending, the 50 period above that ascending, the stock above all that ascending. That's a really, really clean looking chart on really any time frame. But I want to maintain that. So bulls, any downside test of that 50 period, I don't really want to give that up and start treating that as resistance. That breaks things, but perhaps delays things for a little bit, at least according to the 30 minute. Right. And, and what I, when I say that, please understand, I'm talking about the psychology of the people actually driving and the institutions and the algorithms actually driving the stock. Right. Everybody makes decisions based on how they perceive others to make decisions, which is why we put so much emphasis here on that self-fulfilling prophecy mentality on the charts, which is also why our charts are so simple. So listen, bulls, any pull in, test the 50 period. I want to bounce away hard, ideally on high volume and just continue to treat that as support. If it's not broke, don't fix it kind of deal here on the 30 minute bears. We need a downside break of the 50 period downside hard through the 50 period, ideally come down through retest, right? And then reject hard again. That's a break and confirmation. And that could set you bears up for a near term test heading down toward a thousand bucks a share the 200 period on the 30 minute, those two areas. All right. Now, Let's move on here to the four hour chart. You can see I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because we pulled away so hard off of earnings. Um, but you can see bulls, you know, this is a really good thing to see. That 50 period on the four hour chart, it's a slower moving moving average. We know that, we accept that. We don't expect it to get upside in a day and a half, but it's ascending at a more and more aggressive rate each day. Friday's a great example. It continued to move upside. A continuation of that aggressive ascending pattern out of the 50 period on the four hour is good. Why? Because I want to get that psychological level, at least potentially, up underneath the move. I always say get some feet up underneath a new move because a common problem that you have with big moves, it's like, okay, we got the move, but now we're left with a bunch of people questioning the move because there's nothing underneath it. It's floating on thin air. It's floating on fundamental hype, which we know always takes over the fundamentals, the numbers, mid and long term. But in the short term, psychology always wins. You'll have short periods where fundamental repricings take over, like an earnings event, and then it's not long after the fact, very quickly actually, that psychology just comes back into play, and it takes over, and nervous bulls start taking profits, and ambitious bears start in beefing up their short positions. You want to give as much reason as possible to not freak out bulls, which means a lot of support levels everywhere, anywhere they could possibly be looking, and discourage bears, right, if you're a bull, that's what you want, okay, whereas bears, of course, on this chart, you'd want to see that thing taking its time to get upside, the 50 period, that is. Now, the daily, the most important chart of all, let's take a look, so you can see here, guys, that, like, the last two days of the week, Thursday and Friday, we're basically pressing all-time highs, the high on Thursday, uh, at least here on the daily, we're showing a high of uh, 106320, 106320, and then Friday the high, uh, a new new all time high, of course, 106475. So it, it's it's within like a a buck, buck fifty, two bucks of each other. What I'm really looking for, guys, come tomorrow, come Tuesday, is to just honestly continue to press into all time highs if we can. Bears, you're going to want to reject new tests, ideally rejecting off like 1065 if you can. I'm sure, sure that would be an all-time high, but not by much. And if you can reject that hard, like even early in the day on big volume, that's, I, I mean, I, I, I want to say power move out of the Bears, but considering the last few days, I mean, yeah, that'd be a power move, I, I suppose, out of the Bears. You know, 
man, Nvidia has not been a forgiving stock to be short. So, um, you know, I, I feel you, Bears. You know, we've all been there. But at the same time, Nvidia has been an absolute powerhouse, fundamentally speaking. Um, and even more importantly, with, uh, with guidance that, you know, at some point you're, you're, you're simply betting on in a period of earnings disappointment. Okay. Which I, I've been actually talking about for the better part of probably six to nine months now that I think is going to come across blue chips, but it's so hard to know exactly when, whether it's going to be later 2024 or sometime in 2025, because the way that inflation beefed up earnings reports, it's going to be really hard to continue to impress. NVIDIA has somehow pulled it off, um, but long term, we're going to see a season of earnings disappointment across all stocks, including NVIDIA. It's just a matter of when, when is that going to hit. But man, as of late, this thing has been a freight train. Now, look, if we look here, obviously, a thousand bucks a share has been. Oh, and by the way, guys, this is the daily. I should mention this. We're not going to show after hours movement. So we are up to 1069 in the after hours. So we're talking about 1065, 10, maybe 1070. You know, a rejection off of either of those levels will do. But again, remember, taking the after hours movement with a grain of salt. So I'm more so just right now looking at the close. But it's very much so worth mentioning that pushing in, pushing into all time highs like this in after hours into a long weekend is such a power move that does not guarantee anything, by the way, the following week. Because when you have when you give people three days to digest something, sometimes what you see is the following week people come in and they just they just decide to trim like some big fund or firm decides to start trimming and it triggers some kind of. Uh, volatility snowball to the downside that sometimes happens um, but that's not to say you know it, it just can't feed on itself over the long weekend but look we've been talking a lot about a thousand bucks a share I would argue the biggest level in NVIDIA's history and we're now 6% away to the downside at least as far as the close that's not a that's not a very small move Okay, so listen, Bulls, if we pull back a little bit, it'd be really, really nice to hold 1050 is the area that I'm looking at. Um, but moving up toward 1100 bucks, every $100, especially from here, before the split occurs, obviously, um, is going to be a big psychological level. Okay, so Bulls, ideally, hold 1050, if not move up toward 11. Uh, bears, a downside break back through 1050 is a great ceiling, potential little safety net, at least in the short term, to try to hold off new all-time highs. Because um, really, ultimately, your goal as a bear is to try to get this thing back down below 1000 bucks again, pre-split. Okay, 100 bucks post-split. Because that is such a huge psychological level that without something like earnings to help push through, if you can give that up and claim that as resistance, that could delay things for you bears. Um, or I should say delay things for the bulls, which is good for, for bears, at least in the short term. Okay, now, implied volatility. This is very important, especially if you're trading options. Of course, continue to tank off here on Friday. Not unexpected after earnings, we talked about this. Okay, so compared to the last week, it's very low. Compared to the last month, it's low. You know, not, not quite as low, but it's low. And compared to the last three months, it's again very low. Okay, so we're basically the lowest we've been in, uh, in, in three months at least now, you know, with the exception of like one day. Okay, so when IV is very low, remember, you're, if you're buying new options, options, you're paying very little Vega value up front, at least compared to the recent past, which is perceived as good by, by most options traders. For me, I like to wait until I have a strong directional bias on a name. Um, and ideally when IV is low compared to my intended trade time frame, the amount of time I plan to hold a trade to buy options. Um, like if IV is very high, comparatively speaking, I'm not, I, I don't, I almost never buy options in that environment just because it's so difficult to outrun um, potential IV crush if it starts to hit. It's just such a tough position to put yourself in. I very much so prefer to buy when IV is extremely low and I have a strong directional bias. Otherwise, I'm either selling options or trading spreads. Now, expected move here tomorrow. We have to do a little bit of educated guess, guesswork, a little bit of math. I'll walk you through it. 
So the next expiration we have is Friday, May 31st. The expected move by Friday's close compared to last Friday's close is plus or minus $42.43 a share. Here's what we do. We have four trading days. So we're trying to get tomorrow, Tuesday's expected move, right? So divide that by four trading days, add back 50%. The initial calculation assumes all green days are all red days. Silly assumption. So we add back 50%. That gives us a plus or minus expected one standard deviation volatility range for tomorrow's close, Tuesday's close, compared to Friday's close of plus or minus $15.91 per share. That's the market's one standard deviation approximate expectation for volatility here tomorrow. Obviously important to know where the market's uh, bias for volatility lies, but directional bias, the other piece of the pie, the other side of the story. Let's look at volume. Just under 2 million total contracts were traded back on Friday. We had 1.136-ish. You know, we'll round 1.14 million calls and about 851,000 puts. So a bit of a call side bias. It's not overwhelming, but it's certainly there um, out of the overall call put ratio. And if we go short term speculators, the, the zero to 20 delta range, we had 401,000 calls, 516,000 puts. So interestingly, it flips to a slight bearish bias out of the short-term speculators compared to a, a bit of a bullish bias out of the overall, which tells us that, you know, as you move closer to like at the money and then in the money, those, which is more like a midterm, long-term and longer-term outlook on average, those, the bias flips to bullish in, in all of those. Listen guys, hope to see you join the private group for tomorrow's trading day. Uh, again, we are restructuring the way that the the sign-up process and therefore the payments are structured. Um, so in the private group, uh, I started that over three years ago. Um, I'm setting up my daily scalp setup alerts, my daily in-play stock alerts, human verified unusual options activity, and working with my platinum one-on-one -on -one group. So in the very near future here, once we have everything ready, the payment structure for new members is going to be flipping, switching over. By the way, if you're an existing member or you join and get grandfathered in at the link in the pinned comment right now, Again, or if you're an existing member currently, nothing will change for you. Okay, so don't worry. It'll just be for, for new people looking to get in. We're going to be structuring it different and, and differently, and therefore the pricing um, is, is going to go up. So if you join at the link in the pinned comment, that you'll, you'll, you'll get grandfathered in uh, at that current rate. So listen, guys, if you appreciate the daily NVIDIA commentary analysis, best thing you can do for the channel is please leave a like on the video and then just get out of here and enjoy your day. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.